one thing that I will do to my 300 hurdlers, um, probably not my rookies, but my, my veteran ones, I will take a small training hurdle and I'll put it down to 24 inches. And on a non-hurdling day, when they're running their workout, let's say they're running 200s or they're running 300s maybe, whatever they're running, I will randomly put that hurdle in the lane that they're running. And I don't put it on a hurdle mark, I just randomly will put it in there. And when they're running their 200s, they have to go over that hurdle. Like I said, I, I'll use just short ones. But I do that so they have to think about chopping, and I'll tell them, don't stutter, so that, so that it helps to teach them to chop and enhance their confidence. Especially if it's one of those really low ones that's only 12 inches or 18 inches. So they're thinking about what do I have to do? Here it comes, here's my barrier. How do I make sure that I'm hitting it at the right spot? Running the curve, um, it, you know, that's a hard thing to teach kids because every track is a little bit different. You never know some tracks where those hurdles are on the curve. But if it's a kid who's leading with that right leg, making sure that they get a little bit to the outside of the lane so that they, when they come down, they don't have to do you know a sharp, sharp turn to the left. Or but always still attacking through the hurdle even when they're going around the curve. All right. I have a video here of one of my 300 hurdlers. This is McKinsey, and this is when she um, won the state championship for us. She um, she is going to be in lane five. This is McKinsey right here. Inside of her is Sally, and Sally is the, was the defending state champion, and they went one two the year before. And I will tell you that Sally. Sally won, and it was because the year before there was a horrific headwind, and McKinsey refuses to hurdle with her right leg, and she did not chop very well the year before and stuttered, and, and it is what it is. So we really worked on that, having the confidence, okay, if you are not going to hurdle with that right leg, you better figure out how to chop in order to get to the hurdle the, with your left the way you want. And if you watch... She's, she's coming around right here. She does a fantastic job of chopping and being able to get through. The other thing that she does is she powers through and attacks the hurdles. And you're going to watch. Here she is. And the way she attacks this last one to get through, is th that, that was the difference for, for her in that race. Now, she's a very gifted athlete, very, very talented young lady. Um, and the lady girl she raced against also tremendous, tremendous athletes. that are both very, very good hurdlers. Okay, one more thing here. Um, these are some of my favorite hurdle workouts that we do. And, I, you know, I, you guys can have the PowerPoint you can see. But I really like to do, if we're running the first third, okay, we're going to race over one, two, three, four times. They get done with... The third hurdle, you walk back, get in the blocks, you're going again. If we're working on the middle third, what they do is we go to the spot where the third hurdle would be, and then I tell them, okay, where would you come off of that hurdle, right? Okay, kind of pick a spot where you would come off, and that's where you're going to start, and we're going to go. Now, it's not very precise when you come to steps, but that's what I want because in the 300 hurdles, it's not very precise. And I want them to have to, to chop. I want them to have to judge and know how to attack through that hurdle, even if it's not necessarily right on the steps that they want. Um, we'll do this race, the two hurdles. So they race over one, two, walk back. They have to go over two, three, walk back. They have to go over hurdle three, four. And they just keep going until they've done they finish with seven, eight. And I don't know how many times we're going to do that. It depends on how many meters I really want them to race that day. One drill, this chase drill that we, that Lisa and I worked with kids last year because we were working with boys and girls. And it just so happened we had three boys, three girls. And this, the, the kids loved this. They begged to do this repeatedly. Um, we had the girls in, say, say we're Louie using lanes three, four. We have the girl, her, the hurdle set up for the girls in lane three, that height, the boys in lane four. 
And what we did is we let the, the girl, we said, okay, whenever you want, you can start. But the boy had to wait for me to tell him when to go. So he's having to chase the girl, chase her down. The girls, it made them, they knew the guys were coming and it made them just get after it. And of course the guys are getting after it because they wanna go try to chase the girl, the girls down. We do do this like with two girls even where, okay, you're gonna chase this girl down or hey, she's coming after you because that happens in the 300 race and we want them to know what it feels like mentally knowing here they come. The other drill is that we really like is the Kalina drill. I got this from Kelly Kalina, a Red River athlete who um, came back from college and he gave us this drill. So I probably should give this credit to his college coach, but um, where we race over one, two, three, then we walk back and we go two, three, four, walk back, three, four, five, walk back, four, five, six, walk back, five, six, seven, walk back, six, seven, eight, and then you go across and you do it over again. And when they're done,